Okay, I'm going to continue with uh, the universal cover of the circle. Um, lecture two. Um, so in this uh, theorem, uh, in this lecture, uh, the main theorem is that the loop space of the circle is equivalent to the type Z of integers. Let's just recall what the loop space of the circle is uh, of, of an arbitrary type. Uh, at the base point A is just the type of identifications from A to itself. Uh, and it's, uh, it also comes equipped with the point always. There's always the reflexivity identification. Um, so um, one of the things we always do in homotopy type theory, like half of the time we're characterizing identity types or computing loop spaces and so on of like any type that we encounter and um, and uh, and the circle is, is like one of the most prominent um, examples of, of this. Um, and it also uses uh, in a very nice way the univalence axiom. Okay, so um, I mentioned that we are going to characterize identity types, and um, the main theorem uh, to do that is what I call the fundamental theorem of identity types, and it says this: if you have a type A and a base point little a, and you want to know what is the type uh, A equals X for arbitrary X in A? Then you uh, think, okay, maybe I have some idea about it. If it was pairs, then it should be a pair of identifications or if it's the natural numbers, I should have uh, some kind of inductive procedure to um, figure out what this equality is. Uh, in general, you, your idea might be some type family B over A and uh, because it's supposed to be identifications, it should at least be true that there's a point B in B of A. <clears throat> okay, so uh, B is our educated guess of what the identity type of A is. And now uh, the theorem says the following are equivalent. Uh, first, you can uh, consider uh, the family of maps F of uh, F from A equals X to B of X that is inductively defined by mapping raffle to the point B that was given to us. Uh, this gives a map for every uh, little X into B of X. And, um, and the first claim is that this family of maps is a family of equivalences. So for each X, F, uh, from A equals X to B of X is an equivalent. So I should maybe have written a little index F of X, but that's like this. And um, this is equivalent to just the fact that the total space of A is, uh, of B is contractible. This is a very nice theorem. Um, and this, if you're actually doing homotopy type theory and, uh, and computing identity types for um, as your job and uh, then you're using this theorem a lot or you should be using this theorem a lot let me say it like that because it makes your life easier <clears throat> and so um, uh, with this theorem there is something called the encode decode method and if uh, if your goal is to uh, compute a loop space of a type a for some uh, type G, um, then, um, then how do you do that? Well, uh, you want to apply the fundamental theorem. So you say, okay, we want to have a type family B over A uh, and at a little a, B of A should be equivalent to G. If that is given, then if I can apply the fundamental theorem, then, uh, then it should be good. Uh, so this B is, uh, is a, again, our educated guess of what the identity type of A is. And we say that it encodes the identity type. And then the second step of the encode decode method is to show that the total space of B is contractible. And uh, if you do that by the fundamental theorem, it follows that um, the uh, family of maps from A equals X to B of X is a family of equivalences. So for each X, you know that B of X is equivalent to A equals X, but um, at A, 
uh, we have an equivalence from a equals a to b of a. <clears throat> and we uh, were given, or we made b in such a way that b of a was equivalent to g. So then we obtain by composing these two equivalences an equivalence from the loop space of a to, uh, to g. And, um, and this, is the, uh, this is known as the encode decode method. And uh, in the way I phrased it here, there's no so much decode, there's only encode and proof that the total space is contractible. Um, and I did that on purpose because, uh, because it, uh, this is the easiest way to, to apply it. If you explicitly construct an inverse from, uh, from B of X to A equals X and show that this map is a section and a retraction, then you just get yourself into a lot of trouble and you'll get headaches for days. Uh, so I recommend, instead of explicitly constructing an inverse, show that the total space is contractible. It's often much easier. And we'll, we'll see that actually um, there is not so much transport to compute if you do this. Um, so, okay, our goal is to do the encode decode method to compute the loop space of S1. We want to show that it's Z. Um, this should be the first step. Uh, sorry for the typo. We want to construct B uh, family over S1. Now, um, we know that S1 satisfies a universal property and U is just another type. It's a very special type, but uh, still it is a type. And that's why we can use the universal property of S1 to construct a type family over S1. And this is really important insight. Um, and to effectively do this, you use the univalence axiom. Um, and with the help of the univalence axiom, we can prove the following theorem, is that uh, the type of families over S1, um, okay, so there's this map, that takes a family uh, P to a pair consisting of P of base, which is a type, and transporting along loop in P is an equivalence from P of base to P of base. And that map is an equivalence. And this uses the univalence axiom. And uh, this is a really good, uh, good way to define families over S1 and in general over other higher inductive types too. You apply similar ideas. So how do you prove this? Well, we start here at the top of the um, triangle, and uh, we go down into the type, uh, the type of all uh, types equipped uh, with the self identification, and by the uh, by the universal property of S one, we know that this map here is is an equivalence. Let's see. Sorry. Uh, we, we know that this map is an equivalence because uh, here we have this identification here. And here we have our other map, the one that we claim is an equivalence. But they are of course related because there is also um, the, uh, um, yeah, I call it uh, e uh, an equivalence from an equality, but uh, it has also been called uh, it to equiv or equiv to it or something like that. Um, <clears throat> This map that uh, given an equality in your universe gives you an, equ an equivalence uh, between the types or it's called a uh, transport even in a uh, cubical actor. Um, by the univalence axiom, uh, this map is an equivalence and the triangle commutes also um, because um, when we um, do this for an arbitrary Q, then we just say a pattern, a pattern induction on Q then this is raffle, then this whole thing actually is raffle, then this will be the identity equivalence. But uh, on the other side, if you put raffle here, then transporting is also the identity equivalence. So that's, super, that's an equality. Um, so the triangle commutes, it has uh, two equivalences here. So that means that the third, mon third map is an equivalence. Um, and therefore we can construct um, a family over S1 by uh, giving a type and a self equivalence. <clears throat> and if you do that, so if you have your type and your self equivalence, then you get uh, via this equivalence the unique family P equipped with an equivalence uh, alpha from X to base 
and uh, how much be witnessing that the square uh, uh, that this square here commutes and uh, this square here just says that transporting along loop in p if you uh, look on the other side that's just applying the equivalence e so uh, transport along loop is that equivalence and that's as it should be because that's the data that we put in um, and uh, I always encourage you to uh, keep uh, to keep track of the computation rules what it gives you because we'll need it now we construct the universal cover of s1 and the universal cover is the unique family e over s1 that comes equipped with an equivalence z um, equivalence to e of base so at the base we choose z and uh, transporting in e along loop should be uh, applying the successor map uh, along z so there's uh, this commuting square here <clears throat> And, uh, and I really want to think of the elements of E of base as integers. Uh, so given an integer K, we write K subscript E for um, the equivalence E applied to K. Um, because uh, we can kind of uh, drop this notation E and really think that this uh, K is, lives in here. Uh, and if you would have a judgmental computation rule, it would actually be, be there. But it doesn't really matter that it's only up to equivalence. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, in the fiber over the point, we have the integers. And then as you transport along the loop, then you uh, go around uh, and uh, you end up one point higher. So you apply successor fun uh, function. And uh, this is uh, for at each integer is the same. As you transport, you get uh, the successor. So the picture that we get uh, for, this, um, for this type family is that of a helix. Um, and this is uh, really a good picture. Uh, so we want to actually prove in type theory that there are some aspects of helixness uh, to our E that we just defined. So I have here a lemma, uh, helix lemma, and it says, okay, if I start um, in the total space at, um, at the point uh, K over the base point, and um, then I can find the path in the total space um, that connects it with the successor of K. Let's go back to the picture. I draw here this green arrow. If I have uh, a pair uh, B, K, then I can lift uh, the loop to an identification in the total space. So this identification goes out of the fiber, goes all the way um, over the, like, oh, it flies over the loop here, uh, goes to this, um, this transported point, which is the successor of K. So <clears throat> the first step of uh, of this lemma says we can construct that green uh, that green identification. And the second one says that if I start at zero over the base point, then I can go to any K over the base point. So let's look. Um, look at uh, at the red identification here. I start at zero. I want to go uh, to another K. Then I just go around as many times as I need to go around to get there. Or I could go around downstairs, but it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> and so are, there are also these uh, red identifications here. And you can kind of see that to, um, uh, uh, to, to get uh, higher, you keep using uh, these green ones. So you just iterate have, having these green ones. They, uh, they exist at all each level. So here there's another one. And uh, then, you, then you can get even from here to there. And if you keep applying it, you can get anywhere. And uh, that's kind of the point of this helix is that you can get anywhere. And that then the total space will eventually be contractible. OK, so let's see how that goes. Um, okay, so first we want to construct sigma k, 
use the characterization of the identity type of sigma types that you all know. Um, okay, so we have to construct um, an identification from base to base, which is going to be loop, and uh, and an identification from this transport along P, which we chose wisely to be loop. Uh, we transport K along that loop, then it will be uh, the successor seen as an element of A. Um, but when you uh, transport along loop, then we use uh, this commuting square here to say, ah, um, we know how to do that exactly and we get that identification. So here, this identification is actually just uh, directly obtained from that commuting square <clears throat> as an instance of that. Uh, so um, therefore we get uh, sigma k. Um, and, uh, and the second claim um, uh, to show that we want to kind of uh, iterate composing um, uh, sigma k as many times as we need. Uh, we're going to use a new dependent elimination principle of the integers. And that elimination principle of z says, OK, if I have a family p over z, and there is a base point over 0, and for each k and z, I know that there is an equivalence. So actually, they will be all equivalent. p of k is equivalent to six, p of successor of k. Excuse me. Um, then if you have that, <clears throat> then you get a dependent function f, um, a section of, uh, of p. And it will be in such a way that f0 is mapped to your choice of base points. And also we get these identifications. So um, this kind of is a super intuitive uh, lemma because the successor on z is an equivalence and uh, and this is just what you need to do. So this is not so hard to, to prove. I won't, I won't show it. I hope you have intuition for this. Um, yeah, it also looks like the dependent limb for the natural numbers, where you don't have an equivalence here, but just an ordinary map. And that's just due to the fact that successor on the natural numbers is an ordinary map and not an equivalence. Thank you. Uh, so now we go back to our lemma here. And how do we get this? Well, um, we use the identity type um, base um, base e equals uh, base x, uh, no base k for uh, k uh, in the integers, <clears throat> and then to step from um, this one to the next one, we can use uh, sigma concatenating with sigma as an equivalence. <clears throat> so using that equivalence and raffle for zero. We can apply uh, the dependent limb um, to, to get this uh, tau, and it will satisfy this computation rule. And you should keep track of your computation rule. So we do that here, and we actually get to use it. OK. Uh, Nikolai Kraus worked on this. Oh, OK, that's about the uh, propositional truncations, yes. Uh, sorry, I'm not following the chat so much at the moment. Um, so now uh, we did this. We are ready for the second step in the encode decode method, and we are almost to the end of this uh, this part. And I have five minutes to do it. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So we want to show that the total space of E is contractible. And the center of contraction is going to be base and zero, the pair. Uh, <laughs> I can look at what is in Cross's paper, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, we're good on time, I don't need to stress. Okay, so we want to prove this space is contractible. Uh, we have the center of contraction, so it remains to construct the contraction. <clears throat> and, uh, and I split the sigma type already for you. So I want to show for every x in S1, for every u in E of x, we want to show that um, uh, base 0 is xu. And note here is this u doesn't directly come from an integer anymore. 
Um, but uh, as we see here, this is a, depend, a dependent function type where the first thing is S1. So we are in a good position to apply the dependent universal property of S1. <clears throat> and the family with respect to which we will do that is uh, this family C of X. It's, uh, it's that part here. So uh, it just C of X is by U and U of X and then, and then this. Okay, so we uh, want to use the induction principle, then we have two cases. Uh, we have to define P and C of base and Q. Uh, we need to know something about the transport along C. That will be like the most annoying part of this proof. But it's like the only time we have to compute the transport. <clears throat> uh, and we have to show that if we transport P along loop, then that gives us P back. Okay. Um, Notice um, that C of base, which was pi um, of Z in E of base, and then some identification, uh, E of base is equivalent to Z. So we are going to use an equivalence here uh, that uh, replaces the domain of this pi type with Z. <clears throat> and, uh, and then we get back in much more favorable situation, namely uh, this U is now a K of E. Uh, K is seen as an element of E of base. And uh, if we compute this transport, uh, so there's there's some like trivial equivalence there that's just uh, just functoriality of pi basically. And we can show that this square here commutes. So here, if I start with the family of identifications P and I have another uh, K in Z, then I have an identification um, uh, pk plus one, which goes to base, but not the successor of k. And I can use this as sigma from my helix, remember the first part that we constructed, to get back to k of, k of e. <clears throat> so this action, you can show that this uh, square commutes uh, by just some general nonsense. Uh, but that computes the transport for us because now it fits into this commuting square and this transport morally it is just that function. Um, so now um, if we start with uh, p here then we use alpha to get it here we want it so we use instead of uh, a p in c of base we use a p in in this type here and alpha to get it back to, uh, to this step here. So we will have alpha p's here. I want to show that the transport of loop, uh, along loop of alpha p is alpha p. Um, that's what is written here. But now because this square commutes and these are equivalences, that's equivalent to uh, just showing it for every k, p of k is equivalent to, and there's a typo here. Uh, this shouldn't be an inverse, or it should have been on the other side like it was here. But uh, uh, this is just an ordinary sigma k. Um, so we should uh, prove this. But this we know how to do, because this was the second part of our helix lemma. Um, if you remember, it was this uh, tau here. It's exactly of that type. For every k, you have this identification and computation rule. <clears throat> um, so here it says that, okay, you have to exactly uh, uh, do that. And uh, therefore the proof is finished. Um, this is the proof of the theorem. Uh, the loop space of S1 is base. And uh, as a corollary, we now know that because E was a family of sets and they are not a family of propositions because Z is not a proposition, follows that circle is a one type and it's not a set. And in particular, because it's not a set, it's also not contractible because contractible types are sets. This is how that goes. And uh, for the exercise session, I, uh, I decided to do this uh, twisted double cover, which lets you work with um, uh, families over, um, over S1 again, uh, practice with a simple case. And here it is. Uh, it is instead of um, the helix, it goes around once, but then as it goes around, it goes back to the first point. Um, and, uh, and you can then show that the total space is S1 
uh, with some work. This is slightly more work than fits in the exercise session, so it's more like homework. But um, uh, it is still good to get your hands on this and glad Andre agrees. Uh, five minute 